Hi, my name is Mark Fishbein. I'm a poet and musician. I live in the Capitol Hill section of Washington, DC. I'm a native New Yorker and here now for about 10 years. Among the wonderful things this city offers are the great monuments and sculpture. And I have a collection of now over 30 poems about them or to these sculptures. I'll read a few showing the sculpture on the left side of the screen and the poem on the right. Please read with me. I'll begin with the theme poem. Statue, sculpture and monuments in Washington, DC. City of monuments, statues, elegies and odes in marble, in bronze, granite, stone, steel, molted iron or gilded gold. Others have skyscrapers, but here there is sculpture. City of ornaments, friezes and pedestals and great pavilions that turn men into myth, Lincoln, King, Mandela, Gandhi, a hundred more, heroes to the cause of freedom and martyrs unknown, but to their plaques below. Among the eagles, lions and pagan beasts that will outlive us as we become the ancients and join the litanies of fallen empires. Here sculpture lives as I am made of them, from the clay of Eden to the dust and ash, a poet in the sacred palace of America. I write what they tell me I must write, these artifacts of history and dream. Here are my thoughts as I hear theirs, sometimes. And I'll begin with a, uh, a light and kind of a little nasty poem. This one is the statue of um, the Joseph James Darlington Memorial at the DC Court of Keels Building on Fifth Street in D Northwest. It's made of gilded bronze. And the inscription below the base reads, this monument has been erected by his friends with the sanction of Congress in the memory of Joseph James Darlington, 1849 to 1920, governor, teacher, lover of mankind. Golden concubine. James Darlington, lawyer, teacher, writer of Oz, Poor fellow, this was chosen to remember you by. Lover of mankind, did you have some fetish about golden girls or golden showers? He's a reject of Czar Peter's summer garden, cast in, in gilded bronze, laminated in gold enamel. Their statues are the real McCoy in 22 carats. When any naked golden away, well, we men have a momentary lust. How many have sprayed their territory and howled to claim her as their own? It's shameful. Yes, we objectify her and urge to mate. Bad habit. But there are many naked maidens, maiden statues about muscular and holding spears and scrolls, but they are made of stone. Gold skin is soft as peach and smells of mandrake. Say, if we met at the bar, her and I and the form, we'd hit it off and go to the intercontinental, get a, case, get a cozy room. The act will be perfection. The form will fall asleep in our arms. And above all, she's got the sanction of Congress, that club of old men who dream of golden girls. So here's to the memory, to the honor, to our beloved governor, teacher, author of law books, and lover of mankind. The Korean War Mon uh, Memorial, the, the Forgotten War. These giant soldiers, I pass them in shape with fear, heaped in ponchos like Praetorian guards spread out amongst the rice paddies in a disobedient province. Who remembers why they must kill or be killed as fatal hours? Who remembers this war who wasn't there or lost a son, a brother, a father? They have seen things that makes the child inside them scream. I look into the blank eyes of these stone men and feel shame, shame that they will have limbs blown away or faces and nothing will have changed since they left here. These were boys when they were called to the war machine. 
comrades in arms. Around them cities were bombed to ashes and populations sent to the firing squad. You can feel that every moment is an eternity. Mouths dry with anxiety, the smell that fear puts in sweat. The cost of freedom is buried in campaigns of slaughter, soon to be followed by others in faraway jungles, the deserts, protesting, protecting the empire's changing influences. One should leave a memorial uplifted, the paid respects, to have honored the dead by saluting their cause. Some might pray for them as if the Lord takes sides. I love the Patria by its hope and promise, not by its wars. The Albert Einstein uh, statue at the National Academy of Sciences. Chaim Albert, my fellow Jew, who looks so like my uncle Nady. You are the sole member of the tribe in this city of statues, wearing baggy pants with an old knit sweater, looking like you have done what you were born to do in that time when life is mostly nostalgia. I was thinking that ones like us who keep our distances from shul, we know we are chosen most to be hated by everyone except our own, resented too by those who obey the Sabbath, and what have we done to deserve that? We who worship music and peace. There is no logic to the cruelty of a God, silent to the crimes of our guest children. I'm here for the grace of your understanding, but your eyes are lost to the impossibility of absolutes. Hey, once I understood your basic theory, I did, but it was only for a few moments. Then it was lost to the outer reaches of space because equations are a form of purest poetry and poetry tends to reach for the nearest black hole as words lose their meaning like a fading mist of infinitely smaller numerology. Hero of my people, we, sh we who shout l'chaim, holding notes of your poetry of logic. This you understand, one famous line in a poem is a lifetime achievement. Same with an equation, we Jews have a sense of that. I'll provide a little musical interlude here as, as Neruda was a guitarist and would play a caraba. This is to Buster Pablo Neruda in the lawn of the Organization of the American States. Oda Neruda, hola Neruda, hi Neruda. I did not expect to find you back in the patio looking at a spectacular tree in your favorite season, the one which joins the fruit to earth, as I remember from Oda Spada of Westless. Ay, ay, Neruda, you know I play also like you, La Guitara. I heard you were trying to master Tataga as I do. Tony, listen to me, wonder. Can I call you amigo? I beg you, you are so kind. Your face has the mystery of a death mask. Every detail of the face captured in the mold, the white hot metal, now the color of pistachio ice cream, which is my favorite. I know I am close to your love affairs. Now you live inside as words live inside their endless possibilities. With you, anything is possible by calling you the color of pistachio. The Titanic Memorial by the Naval Academy. I'm dedicating this poem to a very dear friend who has died, the missing. Not a day passes without a full house of tragedy. Somewhere in this wide and fragile world, a daily dose of earthquakes or pandemics, a distraction from tragedies in our own lives. We curse the thief of fate like a dragonfly whose wings have burnt away and left us here. 
Today I spread my arms wide for you to take in all the elegance of our times as if we stood on the summit of our love. There is something so elemental, such light air that we might glide again in the sky before the hour sends our wings aflame. And I'll close uh, with this uh, poem, which with, became two poems. Uh, I had first uh, wanted to uh, write about the Statue of Freedom above the Capitol Dome in spring 2020 and had one poem and then rewrote another poem uh, this year after the January 6th events. So the first poem, spring 2020, Statue of Freedom. Atop the dome of the people, the future of civilizations will know us by her, our Athena, our goddess, who would fill the Parthenon with hope, for the ungovernable world of power. But how almost bored she seems to be, her hands on a sword and shield, a wreath of peace that looks like a frisbee, dressed like a Mayan queen, a Turandot, with a starry helmet. Her name is freedom, that boundless word, that bombastic word, that word with endless permutations. She hears the great debates below her, opinions from right and left of the aisles. She, who knows prejudice and sacrifice, listens to the platitudes and stares at the sky. And then a year later, January 14th, I see you from my bedroom. I see you from my bedroom window atop the dome, reassuring as the full moon passes through wolf-like clouds, an exquisite lady adorned in native dress, goddess of freedom from a land of make-believe. Last week a vagabond mon mob was riled by rumors and lies and would burn you at the stake like a heretic queen replace you with a white eagle soaring for revenge. Your body defiled with hysterical insurrection, shattering glass, urinate, urinating on walls, waving flags of confederacy. Now it is your very elegance, your exotic mystery, which claims the figurehead in our state of siege. And that's a couple of poems from the collection that I did on the uh, on the statues of Washington. I hope you enjoyed it a little more about me. I'm the host of two very long uh, existing writers workshops here in the Washington DC area. Now, of course, on Zoom, the Poets on the Fringe and the DC Poetry Collective. And I, I also host events on Zoom. Uh, I do a uh, one called Planet Poetry 28. Uh, in which all the poets, 20 poets from around the world each month, uh, share some minutes of their poems while the poem can be seen on the screen as I do, which I think helps the poem a lot. And I have five collections of poetry available on Amazon and several others looking for a publisher, including this uh, book I read from today. And uh, if you want to reach me, please do very simply. I'm poetwithguitar.com. Mark Fishbein, poetwithguitar.com. And thank you all for listening and we meet.